me can exit everything so I could see. I can see clearly. All right. Now, everything we're going to talk about, everything you want to know about stress, right? Everything you want to know about stress, right? But we're too uptight or overwhelmed or strong out to act. So as you go along, you could feel free to ask the question as you go along, all right? Now, the objective of this is to explain the mechanism of stress as far as we can understand it then, to outline the ways we think this knowledge could be applied to the problems of daily life. And finally, as a kind of laboratory demonstration, to describe the ways he himself applied his success to his own problems. So that is Dr. Hans Thiele, who was one of the guys who did the course with you in terms of the stress. Now, the little ABs of stress. What are the little ABs of stress? The first one we have awareness, all right? That's the first thing, awareness, balance, then change, all right? So as you go along, you're gonna discover that for you to know that you're in a stressful situation, you must be aware that you're in it, all right? And we're gonna come back to the ABCs as we go along, all right? Now, if you continue to do the same thing you have been doing to deal with the stresses and strain of your life, you will continue to get the same results you have been getting. To get a different result, you have to change what you're doing. If you choose to relate to the stresses of life differently, you will get a different result. All right. Now the concord factor, stress and strain outside, peace and tranquility on the inside. Just imagine being on the outside of the concord as opposed to the atmosphere at how many miles per hour, maybe 800 miles an hour, right? The 747 can go about 600 miles an hour and this can go twice as fast. So just imagine this is going 1200 miles an hour and you're on the outside. Just imagine the kind of stress you have on the outside, all right? But whereas there's stress and strain on the outside, there's calm inside now, inside of the aircraft, it's relatively peaceful, providing the, um, what you call it now, the cabin pressure is okay, then all will be fine. But if the cabin pressure drops, then you know there's gonna be a problem, all right? Now, one guy says, when I woke up this morning, I had one nerve left. I know you're getting on it. <laughs> huh? Just imagine. You had one nerve left and you're getting on it. I'm sure many of us would have gotten up and things don't feel too bright and then somebody comes to tick you off. And you probably want to give them a piece of mind. Huh? Now the stress came. All right, you could measure yourself from one to 10, right? Low stress factor, concord factor, or high stress factor, Frazzle friend. All right, so if you're way up there 10, you look like you're very stressed, all right? If you're in the low one, two, three, four, you could be less stressed, all right? Now, stress huddle. Let's look at this stress story, defining terms. Now, you see a crane there, anything that put a strain on you going on the stress, everybody go on the stress, even a strain go on the stress. Even though it's built to take up weight and so on, it's stressful to lift up heavy weight. All right, so Now, you look at here, you see the different kind of situation, family, you have stress in family, or you're at work, and you work in a telephone line, so the hair is an edge. You know, you hardly could take a break before the phone rings again, and then you, 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 you overweight. And so that is a stress to you. you. Your body is saying, okay, you're heavy, so you need to lose some pounds. And of course, you're at the desk, and you're overwhelmed with all the work on your table. So everything in life creates some level of stress, all right? But then when you come up to the ABs of stress, so you need to be aware of what is causing the stress. Now, stress is the non-specific response of the body to any demand made in it. That's by Hans Seeley, MD. So 
Stress could be anything. It could be a ride in a bus. It could be somebody in your office that is just a pain in the head. All right? Could be children. Yeah. Could be the pastor. Could be anybody. You know, it could be a neighbor. It could be a neighbor's dog. The dog keep coming over the yard and letting go his mess in the yard. That's a stress. And you're not doing it behind the bush. You're doing it right in front of the door. That's a lot of stress. All right? So anything in life can cause stress. By the way, a little stress is good. Right? A little stress is good, but you must manage the stress. All right? The stresses of life are stresses. So anything that stresses you out is a, is a stressor. All right? Stress is your response to stresses. All right? Here is that you have two persons there. One is sitting on a bum, and the next person there is hashing out something like fire. You know? Everybody deal with life differently. This person is calm and cool, even though they're sitting on a bum. All right? Activating events and consequences. If now, when you. Me. Huh? So, may I ask a question? No, sir. No, activating events. No, consequences. No, that's stresses. That's the activating event. Then the consequences, the response stress. Now, there's going to be this physiological response, there's going to be motion response, and there's going to be the behavioral response. All right? So, when you're stressful, it's going to affect you psychologically, it's going to affect you emotionally, and it can affect every aspect of your life. All right? We are all subject to stresses. The amount of stress we experience depends on how we respond to them. All right? Now, these two ladies, they are working on the desk. Now, you can see one is happily picking out a problem, and the next one now is going for gun to send the computer where it comes from. So one choose to be calm, and the next one choose to be, what, stressful. So she's creating more stress for her, as you can see. This one now is calm because what? She finds a way to deal with the computer. So when the computer starts to get problems, start to crash and start to mess things up, you got to keep yourself calm. It's one stress you can't get the work done. It's another stress if you get the computer out of commission. All right? So if you take a gun and shoot the computer, you know everything done. So you got to get a new computer and the stress, and the boss may say, well, okay, we're going to take it to the paycheck which is not big enough already. So it's more stress for you, all right? Now, stress management is of responding to the stresses of life by making choices and taking actions that are intended to prevent, minimize harmful consequences and create maximize positive results. I want to say it again, stress management is the process of responding to the stresses of life by making choices and taking actions that are intended to prevent, minimize harmful consequences and create maximize positive results, all right? Now, stress management then is the process of responding to the stresses of life by making choices and taking actions that, as we said before, are intended to prevent, minimize harmful consequences and create maximize positive results. All right. Now it's a process, it's a response, it's making choices, it's taking action, it's preventing, minimizing and harmful consequences, it's creating, maximizing positive results. Now, if you find yourself in a very stressful situation, for instance, like if you, out on the field and you're in your garden and you're working in the garden, next thing you're stamping an ant's nest, especially fire ants. Now, your body goes to several things before you move from the ant's nest. Now, if you're going to talk about the process of jumping out of the ant's nest now, what your body have to do to describe what you had to do to come out of the ant's nest, right? To describe it would take you almost an hour. 
but then you're able to think through and within a split seconds or a million of seconds, a milliliter of a second, jump with the answers. But before you jump all the answers, your body already done process all those actions. You became aware, the ABC, you're aware, then you change, then you um, be what? Balance. You determine what you're going to do, if you're going to sit in the answers or you're going to jump out. All right? So you're aware, you balance, and then you change behavior. So all that you went through there before you jump out the answers is an action that would have taken you pretty close to half an hour to explain, but the body's able to figure that all out within a millisecond of seconds, so you jump with the answers before you get any further stress, all right? Okay, now we have external or internal stress. Now things can affect you from the outside. Now they have an image of a guy trying to carry the world on the shoulder and you have somebody who is just worrying because of what? The amount of work that he has before him, he can't get it done, so he's worried, all right? Or maybe somebody's pushing a big barrel full of cement or concrete to carry someplace and that thing is heavy and the guy keep loading it up. So that's a lot of stress for you out there, but then you're behind your desk now and the work is spying up and everybody calling and you seem to not be able to get it done. So the external stress and the internal stress. Dr. Walter Cannon, classic research, cat confronted by a dog. Now, adaptive changes. Now, as I said before, your body goes through certain changes when you're stressed. Your heart rate goes up. Your respiration goes up. You're sweating. Your sugar, blood sugar goes up. Your sugar in your blood goes up. The blood clotting mechanism goes up. Muscle function goes up. But look at the one at the bottom. The digestive process goes down. When you're on the, when you're stressed, your body do not work well to digest your food. So you got to get yourself calm. It's not to say you're not going to eat, but you eat less so that at least your, your body can bring itself back into a state of balance. Remember, you have to be aware, then you have to balance, then you're going to change behavior. So you see all these other things are going up, your heart rate gone up, your respiration gone up, your blood sugar gone up, your blood clotting mechanism gone up, muscle function gone up, and look at the digestion what goes down, all right? Now, when you're in a situation, you're gonna fight or flight. In other words, you gotta run or stay. Now you choose which one will maximize the positive and minimize the negative. So when you're in a stressful situation, then you have two choices. Either you're going to fight or you're going to run. Sometimes they say he who fight and run will live to fight another day. But I'm always running from fight and then you have to come back the next day, I run, all right? But there's some folks who choose to fight because if they fight, they figure well they're able to manage and they could maximize the positive and minimize the negative. But it doesn't always work that way. You got to know yourself. You got to know, you got to balance what you do know. You got to be aware of the situation. You have to balance what you're going to do. In, in other words, then you somebody comes and they hit your car. Your brand new car got the showroom just the other day. It's not even week old, and some quiz might come and put a dent in your fender in a position that makes your vehicle look rather ugly. Now, you can choose to make noise at the person, quarrel with them, or you can calm yourself down and say, let me wait for the police. Because you don't want to get hot. It's already stressful already, so you need to keep calm. And make sure the police comes, you take the information and you give them your side, and they give them their side and make sure if the person's wrong, make sure they admit the police that the one's wrong and they get insurance information so you can be taken care of. Now, you can choose to fight the person there if you want to, or you can remain calm. Let me give another example. Or 
your neighbor is blasting it with the so loud that your house is vibrating. What do you do? Do you go over and talk to them calmly? Do you unplug the car and do you cut the wire to the house? What do you do? Do you call the police? You see, you're balancing in your mind what you're going to do. Going over to your neighbor's house to fight him may not, is not a good idea. For one, you're going to be trespassing. Man can pull a gun at you or send his dog after you. All right? And, um, and so, if you're going to go by a neighbor's house, it could be bad for you. Now, if your neighbor is good, the person may understand that and he may calm down the music, but if you and your neighbor are not on talking to him, then he's not going to hear you. So your best option in this case is to call the police. Call the authorities so the authorities can deal with him. You do you know fight him. All right? So if he's playing his music, his music too loud, that is disturbing you. You need to get some peace. So you have to find a way to get him to turn down his music. If he doesn't listen to you, then you call those in authority. You don't take matters in your hand because you create more stress for yourself. Or you can choose to run. Now, there are different cases where you have to run. If it's a case where there's a physical altercation, you may choose to fight or you may choose to walk away. All right. All right. So you fight or you run, which you think is more adaptable, adaptable to your situation. Now, human reaction to stress. As I said before, the physiological changes. The heart rate goes up, blood thickens, goes up, respiration goes up, hormones and adrenaline goes up, sugar in the blood goes up. Muscle function goes up, sensors keener, and look at the digestion still go down. So we're saying that digestion is always going to be low, below. So you got to make sure that yes, you eat, but you don't eat a lot. You eat a certain amount because you don't want to compound the stress. You're under stress now. When some folks are under stress, they eat a lot. Some don't eat at all. All right. So you have to know yourself. Come back again to the ABCs: awareness, balance change behavior. Stressors are useful, adaptive, functional. They help to keep us on our toes. Now, not all stress is bad. All of us go through some level of stress every day. The difference is, is how we choose to handle our situation. All right? The stress could be useful. It could be adaptive, it could be functional. You could benefit from it if you know how to handle it. So where's the real danger? Is an acute stress, no? Chronic stress, unrelieved stresses causes the damage. No, acute stress is converted to chronic stress when we continue to relieve it or fit or fight it after the danger is over. Now, when you are in a stressful situation and the situation is taken care of, and you continue to worry about it, you're creating what we call a distress situation. You have stress, distress, and new stress. What you always want to have is what we call you stress, not distress. You stress meaning that you're controlling situation and situation not controlling you. No, you don't want it to go into the chronic situation. So you want to make sure that when it's an acute situation that you take care of it, right? You don't want it to move from acute to chronic, then to degenerative because you're pushing yourself further and further where it can be helped. So I want you to understand that. Now, the dangers of chronic stress. Now, unrelieved stress adversely affects the immune system. It's going to affect you physically physiologically, psychologically. So you have to make sure that you're able to get rid of that stressful situation as it's going to cause you some health problem, all right? Chronic unrelieved stress is probably the most severe threat to your immune system. That's by David McKinney, Kenzie, MD, all right? 
So that's why I say chronic unrelieved stress is probably the most severe threat to immune system. Preoccupation with irritating stressors can cause one to be less productive and more accident prone. When you keep occupying yourself with stressful situations or you keep worrying about things that, or you're anxious about something that you can't do nothing about, you just keep on irritating your system and you're gonna find yourself in a very stressful situation. Not acting on flight or fight preparedness causes chemical imbalance. So, so when you don't do either of both, if you don't fight or you don't run, you're going to be causing some issue because if you stay in the answers, as I said before, or if you just keep on irritating yourself because the neighbor music is loud, then you're going to find yourself in a more unbalanced situation. You need to balance things. You need to know what you need to do. Something you need to walk away. Maybe go for a walk down the road or maybe go for a drive someplace and then when you think neighbor has locked up in music, you come back home. All right? So you have to balance things and then you got to change your behavior. We simply stew in our own juice. All right? We simply stew in our own juices. Stress triggers disease like heart disease, asthma, diabetes, mental illness, high blood pressure, ulcers, cancer, common flu, and cold. So when you're too stressed, it breaks down your immune system. And when your immune system breaks down, then the, all, all these diseases can come into your system. So you want to make sure that you get rid of the stress factors very quickly. You have to be aware. Sometimes we find ourselves in danger because we're not aware of what is happening. So you have to first be aware, then you say you can balance, be, balance change, and then you're going to change behavior. All right? So you got to make sure you understand that. All right? Now, when you look at the relationship between stress and survival and illness now, you find that muscles tend to prepare for flight or fight. All right? Increase adrenaline secreting into the bloodstream because you're getting ready for something. You're, you're excited, you're, 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 you're frightened, so you, you, you want to do something. Heart rate forces of contracting muscles. So everything is happening there. The physical, psychological, physiological, everything is going right there. Right? Then you have survival value in facing danger. You have faster reaction time, you get headache. You get headache, you get, depends on what you do, you can end up getting a headache or backache, right? And then you have mobilizes resources for rapid action. Now, I'm saying, you see all this is there? I'm saying that the body is acting so fast. In a split millisecond of a second, you already make a decision as to what you're going to do. All the processes were taking just a mere uh, of a time before you jump with the Right, but it's taking, and then after a while, you find irritability, anxiety disorder, insomnia, can't sleep, you know, hypertension, then you have heart pounding, wear and tear on arteries, leading to coronary heart disease. And so, all these things are happening. So, when you're too stressed, when every time you get a stress situation, your heart rate beats fast, you know, and so you want to keep yourself calm, you want to make sure you calm yourself at all times, all right, and you continue with the stress and all the other symptoms that go along with it, all right? That's just good with all what we are just discussing about the psychological and the physical and the different disorders that come with stress. Now, everything emanates from a stressful situation. After you've been in a stressful situation for a while, it triggers off a lot of different diseases and illnesses that the body kind of cope with after a while. So you gotta make sure that you, you are aware that you are in a stressful situation very early, All right? How do you know when your stress has reached the danger point? How to determine if you have too much stress? There are various tests. Social adjustment rating scale, inability to identify the source of your stress, all right? Your own body signals. Now, Body signal for stress. 
constant tension, headache, etc. If you always have a headache and tension, that means that your body under stress. Prolonged fatigue, you're always tired. If you're disoriented, you could be under stress. Sleepiness, yeah, you're not getting sleep, you're gonna be very stressed even you're getting sleep. You're irritable or irritability. Yes, you're always irritable. That could cause some stress. Often feeling depressed. Constantly feeling overwhelmed. These are your body's unique signal that you're under some level of stress. Vital, early detection of stress buildup. Now we have the stress tank. All right. Now, what is in the stress tank? Right now we're going to COVID-19 and some folks have lost a job, trouble financially, relationship conflict, excessive change, sustained illness, steady constant worry, ordinary hassle, reoccurring accumulative irritations. All right? These are what are in the stress tank. But look at what happened now. The overflow will lead to health breakdown. You can get health breakdown or accident proneness, mean that you easily get to the accident. Relationship impairment, you're stressed out that is affecting the relationship. Mental illness, all right? Now, what do you do to close the valve? Well, you're going to avoid caffeine. We don't do those things. Overuse of drugs, smoking, trying to escape yourself from what is happening instead of dealing with it. So you have to buy these things, but we don't do that. So we got to look at other things that will affect us. All right? Now, the stress tank, the size of the stress tank depends on the condition of your health. It depends on the condition of your relationship and social support. You, do you have somebody to talk to do? Do your husband and wife talk? Do the children talk? Do you have somebody you can relate to? Is it, is it that your job is so demanding that it's overwhelming for you? What about your attitude, belief system, type of personality, endowment or heredity? All these things could determine the size of the tank. But then there's the good news. Opening the pressure by belief God. Prayer, spiritual centering, relaxation, exercise. All these tend to relieve the pressure. Eating healthy, healthily. Neighborly love, loyal friendship, love relationship, time management, organization. So even though the tank is there and you have all this, you can release the pressure by making sure that you have an adaptive. Remember, say it's useful and adaptive so you can adapt to the situation where you could find yourself praying because prayer changes things. Relaxation is good. Taking a walk, a cool walk. Relax yourself. You can't sleep in the night. Come out your house, go down the road, just as go for a little walk down the road. Not far. Uh, if you yard is spent, walk around the house a few times, but slowly, not fast walking. Just walk around the house, catch it for a few minutes, and you, you get to sleep. You, know, you get to sleep. Now, Stress personality behavior type. You have type A and have type B. As you can see, type A is somebody who is moving like Speedy Gonzalez. And type B now is the sedimentary lifestyle who just take life easy. They do everything for the comfort. They do not walk, they do not do anything, everything is 
done remotely. All right? Now, type A behavior, hurry, sickness. Now, high competitiveness. Now, those are type A, they're highly competitive. They're always trying to get things done. They have a chronic sense of time urgency. Fast speech, action, and speech. Aggressive, ambitious. Achievement orientation. Difficulty relaxing without feeling guilty. Impatient and hostility. Social isolation. I wonder how many of us looking at this will identify that this is our behavior type A. Is anybody in a hurry? Always having a sense of urgency. You always have one more task to do. Your fast paced action, you know. We live in a fast world, so everything is fast. All right? Difficult to relax in or feeling guilty. You, you always have something else to do, one more task to do. Impatient, hostility, social isolation. You, you're always by yourself because you can't stick to people. Right? You're moving fast. His entire life is wrapped up in the numbers game. His engine is always set full speed ahead for fight or flight, trying to produce more, get to one more meeting, make one more phone call, crowd one more event into an already swollen schedule. That's type A. Are there any type in the house? Yeah. Anybody? Any type in the house? Yes. <laughs> type B, more relaxed. Easy going, easily satisfied, play for fun and relaxation, not compulsively driven by ambition or time schedule. Don't try to cram excessive number of events into limited time. Tend to roll with the stress punches. Anybody there for that one? The B type? Anybody for the B type? Or oh, we have all A. All right. Now your own self evaluation. Look at the scale again. We saw the scale before, one to 10. You could tell me which scale, whichever you're on the scale. All right. Now we see again the wellness circuit continues and the different areas that the stress affects us. The, Behavioral response, the physical response, the cognitive and emotion response, etc. So stress affects every aspect of your life. So you gotta make sure that you manage well, make sure it's useful, adaptive, so that you can get your life easily. And then again, we have the whole stress tank come back again. All right. There's a reason for it. Right, right now, you have a situation where everybody is anxious. Everybody is stressed because of COVID-19. We don't know who have it. We don't know who going to get it. We know people are testing positive, some are testing negative. All right? But we recognize that if you're too stressed, it's going to have health breakdown. You're going to prone to get an accident. Relationship problem, we, we snapping at each other. Husband snapping at the wife, wife snapping at the husband. Father snapping at children, wife snapping at children. Sister snapping at siblings. Why? Because of a stressful situation. Sometimes we're in a stressful situation, we don't know. So we, we react negatively. And instead of we maximizing positive, we maximizing the negative. So we want to make sure that we maximizing the positive, and minimize the negative. Now, the goals of stress management is to respond to the stress of life by making decisions and taking actions that prevent, as I said before, minimize harmful consequences and create maximize positive results through a balanced integration of the seven keys. All right, and we will look at the seven keys here. Key components for relaxing. Disengagement, time out. So sometimes you take some time out. You can't be like a type A. You gotta not take it easy going 
to the extreme, but learn to take some time out. That's very important. Slow the pace of life, especially with type A's. Enable body and mind to rebuild reserves. Enhances a positive, hopeful outlook. Stimulate creativity. Increase productivity. Enables you to, to sense early detection of stress buildup. So when you relax, take some time, it's helpful. How to manage stress by relaxing? Have some humor. Release tension. When you have some humor, say laughter is good medicine. It activates disease fighting endorphins. So when you smile, when you laugh, it is healthy. So learn to laugh. Now, here's something for you to laugh at. Illiterate, write to the for help. Dog for sale, eats anything and is fond of children. Use cars. Why go elsewhere and be cheated? Try us first. Auto repair service. Try us once and you're never going to rest again. Stock up and save, limited one per customer. The superstore, unequal in size, unmatched in variety, and unrivaled in inconvenience. Our bikinis are exciting. They're all simply tops. For sale, power shoot, use only once, never open. Call this number. We do not use machinery that tears your clothes. We do it carefully by hand. Man wanted to work in dynamite factory, must be willing to travel. <laughs> Girl wanted to assist magician in cut off head illusion, salary and blue cross. <clears throat> that was some humor if you, you get that. Now something else you do is chest breathing. The most common tend to be rapid and shallow, especially on the stress. The slow, regular, and deep breathing characteristics of abdominal breathing, on the other hand, are associated with physical calm. So what you do, you need to breathe from the diaphragm. When you're excited or you're frightened, you tend to breathe from just your, your mouth area there, but you want to be breathing from your stomach, from your diaphragm, so that's deep breathing. So you relax yourself. That helps you relax it more than the other kind of breathing, shallow breathing. All right, so there's a 14 second break. Deep breathe in through the nose for four seconds, hold it, four seconds, exhale slowly, six seconds. That is by B.K. Olson, energy, energy secret for tired mothers on the run. So the times when you just take some deep breath, especially when you're in a fracking situation or you Ask to do something and you get on the platform and you're nervous. Before you start setting, just take a few deep breaths just to calm yourself down. You'll be okay. Far from humor, create island of peace. Relaxation in the valley through the day. Weekly day off for rest and renewal. Thank God for the Sabbath. Vacation, yes, it's good to go on vacation. I'm guilty of not going. Soothing music. Nature videos, warm bath, etc. All these help to calm the stressful situation. Make peace with the environment. Now, I don't know how many you could sleep with a jackhammer close by, but this guy is asleep while this man is working with a jackhammer just next door. Make peace with the environment. It doesn't mean you must go do that, you know. It simply means that make sure you have peace with everything, your environment, your family, your friends, everybody. Plan lighter days with time for in the point to pose for the most important thing. Right? Now there's a guy by the name of Dr. Mayor Friedman. 
He says, during World War II, my nickname was Cannonball. I never walked, I ran. I interpreted people. I interrupted people. I got furious waiting in line. And I always did two things at once. Working while eating, reading while talking on the phone. I am convinced this type of behavior caused my heart attack. Right? That's what um, this person is saying. You cannot change a type of personality, but you can transform type of behavior. Now I can take the five-way test, he says. When committed looms, commitment looms, a concert, a dinner, out, a conferences, I ask myself, will I care about this five years from now? If so, I accept. If not, I decline. Now the five-way test put things into perspective. You would be amazed how trivial most engagements are. Once I started refusing invitations, I had more time for the things I considered really important, my family, my friends, and my work, All right? Get adequate rest or adequate exercise, thank you, pardon. Now you have types of fatigue, contracted relaxes, contracted relaxes. Now you gotta make sure that you understand when your body is on the fatigue to make sure you know you have to slow down, rest. Don't push it. Exercise is good. When you overstress, just go for a nice walk, not a brisk walk, just a slow walk in the woods, away from traffic, away from noise, and just relax yourself. There. It helps. Adequate sleep. All right? Now, they say we don't get enough sleep. There's some folks who will die very fast, going to the breast of study. So you're going to make sure that you get enough sleep. Some of us, we don't sleep much. Like me, I don't get the sleep I need to get because my body seems to be adapted to a certain amount of hours. But we need to train our bodies to get enough rest. Know how much sleep will do us well. If you're a person who have to get eight hours, get to eight hours. If you can't function on the eight hours, do not want to get six hours sleep or four hours sleep or two hours sleep. Get to eight hours sleep. Now, here, here's a rule of thumb. You are getting enough sleep if you wake up without an alarm clock and without feeling fatigue. If a clock has to wake you up, you're not getting enough sleep. Simply put, a clock doesn't wake me up. I wake up on my own, all right? You gotta know your body, know how much sleep you need, so you don't need to put a clock next to you to wake you up. The only time I use an alarm clock to wake me up is if I have to travel on a flight early in the morning. I don't sleep all the night, maybe because I'm excited or something, or anxious. So you find that I will go sleep at midnight or early morning, and then next thing you know, I recognize, look, by the time I start, I get sleep, it's time for me to wake up. So I may set my iPad to alarm at four o'clock, whatever. So that at least if I don't wake up a moon, at least I hear something to wake me up. But apart from that, I don't need a clock to wake me up. So you got to practice to get enough rest. So you don't need to get a clock to wake you up. All right? So to assure sufficient sleep, Manage the front end. Lock up the TV, go to sleep. All right? Get your rest, you need it. Sleep tips from the experts. Sleep until you fresh, not more. Keep regular hours. Develop a sleep ritual. Exercise every day. Blackout noise. Keep the room on cool side. Don't go to bed hungry. Stay away from the caffeine. Don't smoke. If you can't sleep, get up. Now, when you say don't go to bed hungry, it also means don't go to bed with the belly full. Allow your food to digest at least five hours before you're going to sleep. Right? 
So don't take this thing to go and go to bed hungry, mean that you're going to pull your stomach at midnight and you're going to sleep. No. You must eat five hours before you're going to sleep. So your food can be digested. Then you're going to use relaxation devices. How do you relax yourself? It says, say the sinority prayer. Lord, grant me the sinority to accept the things that cannot change, the courage to change the things that can, and the wisdom to know the difference. The conquered factor. We start with that. Stress and strain outside, peace and tranquility inside. Right, so that brings us to that another section there. Was any question? Anybody? Any comments? Hello? I think it was, it was a good presentation, Pastor, I think. Um, when they always say when you make a good, a, a good presentation, you hardly get questions. <laughs> okay. I would have preferred, I would have preferred it with a face to face, at least I could see the reaction, the emotions, and the faces. You know? But I'm glad that it was a good presentation. And I'm um, glad for those who are here. We started up next week. We, it's going to be a six part series in this one. So this is the first part. And so um, we had the Concord factor. So next time we're going to look at the God, God, real factor coming up next time. And so I trust and pray that we will have gained something and that we have learned much in terms of how to avoid being in a stressful situation. Because all of us are member the ABCs. Anybody remember the ABC? What's A? As we close, what's A? Anybody remember what A is? Vengeance. What is A? If you're listening. Awareness. Mm -hmm. Yes, awareness. And B. Balance. Balance. And no, no. C. Um, changes. Yeah, go contain. Yeah? Is it contain? <laughs> no. Change behavior. Okay. <laughs> right? So you got to be aware. Then you're going to balance, mean that you're going to figure out what you need to do. Now, I use a simple illustration of the ant's nest because I know the main to observe in ants is you're going to jump out. All right? Or you're going to move away. But as I said before, for your body to give the signal to move with the ant's nest as quick as possible, all that action takes a million of a second or in less than a second for you to think about what you need to do. But we are faithful and wonderfully made and the body is able to process what you should do in that short space of time. The great um, neurosurgeon, um, Dr. Ben Carson, when he came to Jamaica one time for graduation for a class there, he took about 15 minutes to demonstrate what you have to do to raise your hand from your side up to your head. It took 15 minutes for him to tell you what your body goes through, but then the body takes a milli, milli of a second to do all that, to process and for you to raise your hand. That's how fearful and wonderful we made. So we need to be taking our bodies I mean, it's aware that if we're in a stressful situation, a stressful situation, know what you're going to do. Balance, then change behavior. Remember, the goal is to maximize the positive and to minimize the negative. Back to you, Joseph. Okay. So, I want to thank you for coming this evening. It's about all about keeping us healthy and ensuring.